Hey guys, this is Jessica at Stash Studio and I wanted to show you how to do a buffalo plaid um, technique on your pieces in your My Art Stash Box this month. So you got a um, six inch wooden egg and a six inch shamrock. You could do this technique to both of them if you love it that much. The um, technique is the same. You can see mine's already painted white um, because I'm sort of painting over some old designs that we want to switch up for the season. So you would start by painting your um, blank wooden piece um, totally white. So you're going to go from this to this. And once you're nice and blow dried, then you're going to take some um, masking tape and we're going to um, kind of measure out a piece that's tall enough to go from top to bottom at the um, middle of your egg. Now, I like to call this a placeholder tape because we're eventually gonna pull this one up, okay? So, but we do want it in the middle, but you don't have to make sure that it's like nice and pushed down really well because all we're doing is saving the space right there so we're gonna put a piece of tape over here and a piece of tape over here. And these are the ones that are going to stay. So the middle one is just to hold that amount of space and so that it's nice and straight and that everything is nice and regular. So now we're gonna pull that middle one up and now you can see that has helped us measure and so we've got equal port, uh, vertical stripes, okay? And so now, um, depending on what colors you want to do, you want to start with your lightest color. So you might want to, you know, just Google Buffalo plaid and see what colors inspire you. I've got these here on my um, palette. You want to get darker as you do. We're going to do three different steps. And so you want the first step to kind of be the lightest um, step. So I'm going to mix just a little bit of blue with this green over here. I don't want to make it too dark, but this is gonna be my light color. And so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that my edges are nice and pressed down because that's what's gonna keep the paint from bleeding under. And then I'm just gonna take my about a one inch brush and I'm gonna paint these sections. All right, if you're getting brush strokes, don't worry. You can either kind of thicken up your paint a little bit. See how if I'm kind of gliding it along, I'm not pushing the paint with my bristles too much. I'm kind of just lock, laying it on there and it doesn't push it out as much. And then always put your brush back in your water and we're gonna blow dry this right quick. Oops, I just touched that. Okay, I keep bumping you guys. All right, so I'm gonna blow dry. You want to make sure this one is good and dry and you can take the tape up save the tape because we'll need it i'm going to set it aside and now we're going to do the same thing but we're going to do horizontal stripes so we take our tape and like i said that's why you want to make sure this is good and dry take your tape and then it doesn't have to be perfect but somewhere along the middle put your placeholder tape down and go along either side. Take that middle one up, press these down really good. All right, so this way we have to do it more than that time. So now you put take your placeholder tape and use it again. And we'll need one final piece on the ends of our egg. So we'll cover up the end. We'll take our placeholder up, use our placeholder up here, and we'll see. You can 
use our placeholder from our first go round. So now you make sure that your edges are pushed down for your tape again. And you can either use the same color that we just used or you can make it a little bit darker. I think I'm gonna make mine a little bit darker by mixing a little bit more blue and green into it. And we're gonna paint again. I'm not really sure if that actually got darker or not, but we'll see. The great thing about acrylic is, if you don't like it, paint it white and start all over again. Or just flip it over and use the other side. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna blow dry again, and this time we're not gonna remove the tape. And if at any point you feel like you need two coats, um, then go ahead and do another coat on it. I'm not going to on this one. So now we want to leave this tape and we're gonna place the original tape back where it was. So if you remember, we left our, we had our placeholder here. So you know your tape was either side of the middle. So I can still see my lines, you probably can't on camera, but in person, you probably will be able to. And if not, then just do the placeholder tape thing again. You place that and then you do it on either side. But I can see where it was pretty good. And so I'm just going to eyeball it and put this original tape back down. So it's just those two pieces. And this is where it looks like a hot mess and you're probably really scared to do this, but this would be the part where you paint your darkest color, oftentimes black. So if you wanted to do like a black and white um, or a gray and black buffalo check, you know, you would have been using gray and then now's your time to use black. So generally speaking, the last color in a buffalo plaid is black. So I'm mixing these two colors with none of this kind of lighter color and using it for my black. And so we're going to paint over everything. And I might do two coats with this one because you can just really, it's just very transparent because there's nothing to kind of block out anything, all the other stuff. So I'm just covering everything up. I don't know, I kind of like it now that I'm looking at it. I'm gonna blow dry and see what happens. I'll leave it and see how it is. And so now we can remove the tape to reveal our design. Oops, see, I got a little bleeding. I was trying to be fast and I got it underneath that. I didn't press my tape down good. You can see my three colors, my three tones. I've got the lightest one that we started with. I made it a little bit darker, and then I've got that darkest 
area here. So I'm just gonna go in right here where I had that bleeding. And this is why it might be a good idea to leave some of like each of your colors on your plate left over for just a little bit of touch-ups if you need it. I poured way too much paint. And I'm probably trying to use too big of a brush, but when trying to do a touch up like this, if you've got a straight edge, I like to get some paint on my brush and then kind of just get it like right on the edge and like I'm going back and forth on both sides of my brush so that I'm nice and flat right here and got a light crisp edge. And then I'm going and I'm laying down my brush just right on the edge that I need to create that straight edge and then pulling backwards, kind of spreading that paint out. Look at me, I'm so messy. Just beware, once you get started, it's hard to stop and you'll wind up messing it up worse, so. But yeah, easy peasy buffalo plaid. And this is so fun, pretty much all season now, just depending on what colors you choose. Um, you got your spring, you can do this for Christmas, do this for summer with um, red and black, do the picnic checker. So, um, and then you add this to your palette easel that was included in your box like so. And you've got a cute little seasonal interchangeable display that you can put on your um, it's got this little stand so you can set it on your side table or on your mantle wherever you want and you just change it out with the seasons how cute is that so thank you for being a part of my art stash and we hope to see you creating soon